Well, oh, come on, Chucky, chubby, 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 oh, chunky, chubby. <laughs> you fat little dog. Ah. Ah. Well, here we are. It's Friday. A day from 4th of July. And what have we had here? Um, we had a fire that uh, we almost had to be evacuated from here. Uh, it has burned uh, 3,000 acres. And uh, it started, oh, just a few days ago. And uh, luckily we were not evacuated, although friends of ours were, uh, because they were actually not that far away. This is only like, oh, the very most, possibly half a mile at the very most. And uh, it just, it, it was one of those things where they, they were pretty sure it was a car fire that some car was on dry grass and that's all it took uh, for it to start. So you got to watch that, especially when you have red flag warnings out like we do. We've had them here for quite a while now. And uh, it, the temperature's gotten, gotten back up again. It's uh, like 85 today. It was down back to 70 only, oh, two days ago. So it's starting up again. And any little bit of breeze, fire currently right now is finally 95% contained. So at least they're getting some kind of a handle on it. But they thought it was out uh, last Friday night when they... Uh, thought they put the uh, the car fire out, and the wind came up that night, and it just took off. It <laughs> that's uh, the weird thing about the wind, and actually it did it did burn some houses. It burned eight houses um, when it got away. I should say eight buildings, um, two homes, and a bunch of outbuildings. Actually, what it was, and uh, but even in. So, uh, even the friends of ours are saying, uh, they were so close that they told them, well, you better go ahead and pack some stuff just in case you gotta leave. <laughs> so that's what they were doing. So, uh, kind of shaky, especially we don't have any big trees here in this area at all. It's just all scrub brush is all it is. And you know, when it takes off, it takes off. And, um, Anyway, yesterday I was looking at uh, uh, George Kristofi's channel and uh, he was working on a Russian radio and of course he had the Russian cap on and everything, called himself Georgi. <laughs> and I remembered I have a Russian radio but his was a big one and uh, mine, it's all Russian. He said, actually it was a, here's a Soviet radio his was came from latvia or something so this one here this was russian it's all cyrillic writing on it in fact yesterday the the writing had the paint had worn off so i had to repaint the uh, name on the top and yeah that's not english <laughs> so and then on top of that i have another radio similar to uh George Christoffi's. His was a VF-202. Uh, I found a VF-317 is what it was. Uh, it's kind of like the same kind of radio he had in that one. Um, so that'll be coming. Uh, that's not going to be here for quite a while because they, could, they said because of COVID-19, uh, their mail is so slow it could take up to eight weeks before I get it, so who knows? Uh, another problem. But what I was going to do today is I was going to fire up this, uh, uh, this, uh, what is this? Oh, it's an amplifier. That's what it is. I was going to fire up this amplifier and see if it actually does work uh, without replacing any parts in it. Um, well, anyway, I'll show you what I found. Come on, chubby wubbly. Down. Ah, there you go. And uh, we'll tilt down here. And if you closer look, 
what I found was these two caps here wrapped up in electrical tape. They were just wrapped together. And then they used tie wraps to hold the uh, capacitors on. So someone has gotten in this, because obviously that is not factory. Somebody did this later on. So, uh, and what I'm going to do is I want to replace that with a new one. Uh, or replace it with this. This is actually 35 microfarads. It got two sections of 35 each. And it's 500 volts. This is 450 at 40, I think. And the other one's... 20 microfarads, so this will be a little bit more. But anyway, let's see if this sucker will work. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on for the first time. If I don't blow it up, I guess we'd be doing fine. So, and on the old Variac, turn it on. That'll be a help. And we'll see what happens. Hopefully, it doesn't have a blown fuse. And that would definitely be a problem. And I'm going up slowly so it's... Because I have no idea how... Now, the other thing that, that surprised me, this thing actually is made, was made in 1958. And this is not as new as I thought it was. I didn't even know it was from the 50s. But according to all the paperwork I have on it, that's what it was. This was made in 1958. And the pilot light's coming on. Eh, I guess I should unplug the light here. Hold on. Ah, there we go. You can see the pilot light's coming on. And we are only at 90 volts. Okay. So, there's 117. Okay. Okay, there's the volume. You hear the hum, so capacitors have to be changed. And look at if I have, I think it's the white one plugged into the phono outlet, either white or red, I forget which one. Nope, definitely this is in the phono. Okay, that would seem first indications are that that works. Just picking out just for me, nothing else. And just me touching it. So if that's the case, if I have something going through, we should be fine. So, yeah. So, I'm going to replace that and I'm going to go and check some of the other parts. But it looks like most of the others that are being used in here look at them they're ceramic disc capacitors so i doubt whether any of those is going to be messed up just the electrolytics as you can tell Let's hear that warbling sound definitely electrolytic it needs more filtering definitely okay well there we are and it is not going to be a shelf queen, from <laughs> at least. So, yeah. So, I guess that's going to be okay. So, we should be fine. And, uh, my little tubes get hot. They're not really overly hot. They don't burn my finger. Yeah. So, yeah, it's only going to put out, they said, at very, at the max, they said, uh, 16 watts. Normal is around 10. So, anyway, and that's going to be it for now. And we'll see you guys later.